so Oscar De La Hoya has um passed some information on about the uh, 1.5 million dollar uh, offer that Tia Fimo is uh, going around saying that he's turned down for a Ryan Garcia fight. Um, as far as the flat fee of uh, 1.5 million dollars that uh, he said that Golden Boy or Oscar De La Hoya has uh, offered him, Oscar said that uh, yes, he has uh, talked to. Um, Bob Aram, Tia Fimo's uh, promoter, he has sat down with him and discussed uh, so, uh, certain things as far as percentages. He didn't say anything about a flat fee. And y'all got to realize, Bob Aram is not finna accept no flat fee from no one. You know what I'm saying? Not at this time. And not this time. He's not finna accept no flat fee. Been in the game way too long. So, I guess Tia Fimo was trying to make it seem like he was corresponding, doing his own deal, and things like that, which, uh, at times, they let him go ahead and go out and do his own thing. I don't know if they still got a percentage. I would probably say, yeah. But they've gone to let him uh, do his own thing. But as far as him being his own promoter right now, no way. That's what I try to tell people. Some guy said uh, that he was uh, changing boxing and trying to do things for boxers. Bro, Terrence Crawford is doing that right now. You know what I'm saying? Deontay Wilder is doing that right now. He's overseas with uh, Anthony Joshua and all these other guys right now. You know what I'm saying? So, it's a lot of guys that's doing that. He, yeah, he has uh, Shelly Finkel and different things like that, but uh, Terrence Crawford does it. You know what I'm saying? He's doing that right now. Not no uh, 1.5 million and saying he got this. Bro, nobody's passing out no 1.5 million dollars to no Bob Aaron. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the information that TF Fimo be passing along, bro, I'm gonna be real. That's why a lot of times I don't even report on it. Or even paying attention. I don't even pay attention to it in real life. He Rick Flair's a lot of stuff, bro. He does a lot of uh showboating on a lot of things. He does a lot of showboating on a lot of things that's really uh not even um a big deal. But like the stuff he's coming up with to promote himself, I mean it's cool. I don't at this point bro you gotta build you don't really need to promote yourself. At this time you don't need to really need to promote yourself. But if you feel like you gotta go out and get deals, you know what I'm saying and all that other stuff. Let's just say if you don't like the offer, bro, you ain't got to fight uh, a big fighter. If the offer ain't there, you ain't got to fight a, uh, a, a big-time fighter. You can just fight a regular, average Joe guy and get a payday. You just, you had, you're had coming off a couple of hard fights, so you can just leave it at there. But from what I'm hearing with Oscar De La Hoya, now, he said that what he is paying attention to is the Regis Pro Gray, Devin Haney fight because if, uh, if Ryan Garcia wins tonight with Oscar, uh, with, uh, Oscar du Duarte, that he'll be uh, looking to try to make a fight for the winner uh, to fight Ryan Garcia. But Ryan Garcia has to do the things that he needs to. That's what he is saying. You know what I'm saying? A couple of months ago, Oscar was talking about trying to make the Tia Fimo fight months ago because Ryan said he wanted uh, bigger fights. Well, not bigger fights. Yeah, he wants big fights. But um, he wants to be more active. But they all they also they don't want to put him in there with just a no-name or a guy who's not uh, fan-friendly or competitive. So they're trying, they're trying to balance it out the right way uh, without moving too fast, but... Um, they're trying to make a point, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to uh, speed up the process. And you can only do that by stepping up the competition. And they're trying to keep the uh, competition uh, above a B, a B, B minus, around that area. They don't want to um, put Ryan in a situation where uh, he's just fighting anybody and his value's going down. But I think he's definitely doing a good job uh, with everything he needs to. He just got to go out there and fight. But Tia Fimo, 
Tia Fimo has a he has a, a little while to go, man. One thing I like about him and Shakur, they know how to market themselves, and they don't need a uh, a promoter going out there and talking them up. They gonna do it themselves. That's one thing I do like about those guys. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to uh, go from not really talking much and doing certain things and just fighting. Then one day you got to get up and you got to promote yourself and show kind of bravado and different things like that. But uh, I feel like um, with Tia Fimo throwing this information out there, bro, it's not it's not making you look good, bro. That was, so let's just say the story isn't true. From what I'm seeing, bro, the information, it could be true. But, nah, not from Bob Aaron's perspective. Now that he says that he sat down with Bob Aaron, nah, I don't believe none of that. Not no 1.5. He wouldn't even sit down with Bob Aaron and say 1.5 to Bob Aaron. Bob Aaron would be like, what? Dude, get out of here. I'm not doing no 1.5 with you. That will be a waste of time. That's a waste of investment. But, um... Especially in a big fight like that. That's not a money maker. As far as on their end, taking 1.5, they'll be losing. But one thing I do know about that 140 pound division, if guys are going to be sitting around trying to hold on the belts in certain spots, you might as well go back down to 135. And this is no, no, uh, this is being serious on all fronts. If, uh, Tia Fimo is looking out, looking for names that just got the 140 or guys like Terrence Crawford. He might as well go back to 135. Because the guys at 140, I'm seeing it's a lot of guys at 140 that's monsters. That could be anybody in the division. Matias, uh, you got uh, Gary Antoine Russell. You got uh, Richardson Hitchison. Uh... I mean, Richard Hitchens. Uh, you have Devin Haney. You got Tank uh, going in and out of the division. You, it's loaded, man. You got a lot of guys in there. A lot of guys at 140. A lot of guys. They got like 20, 30, 40 people at 140 that can fight. So this is going to be a hard little obstacle for a lot of people that's trying to... Uh, go around and make certain fights uh, and put together certain deals because right now from what I'm seeing you know Oscar he's putting the uh, he's pushing the gas right now he's not really um looking for any kind of handouts or anything easy right now he's trying to he's trying to establish something with his fighters right now because he knows uh, he can be at the end of the end of the line right now as far as a lot of guys if the guys don't um show and prove. He got a lot of investments in them guys and stuff like that. So he has to show and prove and um basically prove that those guys are still worthy. They have to prove themselves as well. He's a guy um that's a bo uh a former boxer that knows uh when certain guys are holding back or they're not really um Displaying everything that they can bring to the table. So Oscar is kind of, um, he's fully entrenched as far as in, um, in what these guys got going on. Except for the weight, which I already said in another uh, video. I don't know what's up with the weight uh, discrepancies, but as far as everything else, he he's letting guys know, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to fight the best right now or uh, up the competition. And he's already tried to do a fight with Tiafimo Lopez. So, I feel like at this point now, he's kind of moved away from that idea. Um, he said for the last couple of weeks that he's focusing more on the uh, winner of the Devin Haney Pro Grey fight. He's probably said that the last uh, two to three weeks max. Um, but that's definitely something that can uh, happen. But... Tia Fimo has a belt right now, so it'll be easier for people to find him. But will he be available for certain things unless it's a mandatory? I don't think so. I wouldn't entertain it too much. Because there's a lot of times uh, Tia Fimo's had a history of fights getting pushed back uh, for certain things that he has going on, whether it was injuries or getting sick or certain things like that. So 
the Cambosis fight has been pushed, had got pushed back a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? So, the, who knows? Those guys could have fought once or twice before uh, Lomo or Haney showed up. So, pushing things back and jumping from one promotional team and platform, they went from top rank to Triller to Matchroom, the zone. So, it's a lot of different things that's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? I just got to go with the history on Tia Fimo. And the history show tells me that when he's talking about offers and different things like that, I can't believe him. Really can't. There's too many guys putting up real offers and throwing around real money. And Ryan Garcia, he just fought Tank. So unless somebody's bigger than Tank, I don't think uh, you should be trying to turn down anything that's coming from that direction. But I, but as far as the one point five million dollars, let's just say it was one point five million dollars, right? Let's just say it was one point five million dollars, bro. You know what he'll get? You know what kind of fame he would get for beating Ryan Garcia right now? So that's just me personally. I would have took the deal. So I don't understand. I can't really understand where he's coming from on that. Uh, from that perspective. But being one Ryan Garcia, you'll get a lot. That's a huge win to a lot of people. So to just feel like, ah, uh, you know, 1.5, it's kind of disrespectful offer. I mean, I don't even know if the offer is real at this point. If it was offered to you personally, yeah, that's a real offer. But I, 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 I doubt it was. Like he said, he sat down with Bob Aram, your promoter. But you do have a promoter. Everybody act like you don't got no promoter. Like you just a free agent and you just working with guys. No, that ain't what's going on. See, when people were doing that with other promotional companies, the guys say they doing that with uh, different people, then bosses, I mean, then fans would be like, oh, those guys aren't businessmen of their own. And, but now certain other guys that signed the match room and Eddie Hearn, these other guys, and Bob Aram, now they big businessmen. Come on, man. They're not all businessmen. They're fighters at the end of the day. That's all it is. Oscar know what time it is. He know that uh, Tia Fimo's uh, just doing half of us promotion, half of us real, but has some kind of uh, feel sprinkling on it, so you can't really believe it. But I do believe he sat down Bob Aram, and I do believe that um, he discussed the fight with Ryan Garcia with Bob Aram and Tia Fimo. So that's really all I got on that. But uh, like and subscribe.